Hey guys, and welcome to my first review in my new office. It's not exactly done just yet, but it should be done in the next month or so. I still need to get a fair bit of furniture. So this is just the starting bit of how my office is going to look. I hope you guys really enjoy it, because honestly, I am happy that I'm not just filming in a living room, and I have my own room to do this stuff in. So, I had taken a break from... Uh, doing reviews for a while. It's been a couple months, and I'm just now starting to try to get back into the swing. I will try to come out with more uh, reviews on a semi-regular basis, but we'll see how that goes. And the first movie that I will be talking about in this new office is the recent Tomb Raider film. Based off of the 2013 reboot video game that pretty much rehashed the entire Tomb Raider series and gave a new origin for Lara Croft, um, it, it doesn't follow the story beat by uh, beat for beat, but the whole premise of the island and the Queen of Death is pretty much still there. There are a few minute differences, mainly with um, Laura's motivations for being there, and also um, a couple of things that I will not get into in this. However, at the end of the review, after I give my recommendation uh, whether you should see this movie or not, I will go into a slight spoiler, um, because I feel like I need to bring it up, so if you don't want to hear it after my recommendation, just turn off the video. So first, let's get into the positives, or at least my positives in this movie. First, Alicia Vikander is a much different um, Laura Croft than the Angelina Jolie version, which the Angelina Jolie was based off of the original Tomb Raider, who is more, um, more of a sex object and action hero. But Alicia Vikander is really good, is actually really good in this movie. I really bought into her performance. There are a few times where her accent, her Dutch accent, kind of slips through, which honestly can't be helped sometimes. But I really thought that she did an excellent job, especially in the first half of the movie. She really, um, they, she really sends across who Laura is as a person, what her motivations are in life, and, you know, you know, what, um, what her family name means to her as a person. Another positive was the first half of the movie, which doesn't really focus on any of the adventuring that you would expect in a Tomb Raider story. It mostly focuses on Lara, um, you know, trying to um, come to ter still trying to come to terms with the fact that her father has been missing and potentially dead for at least seven years. And by this point, she's a grown adult, and she's just trying to make ends meet, working working as a delivery person for. Um, it, it was some kind of uh, oriental uh, food service sort of thing, you know, like uh, either uh, Chinese, Japanese, or Korean. And everything in those areas where it just builds who she is as a person, I found really intriguing. And then um, the second half I'll get to in a little bit. And then actually my last positive is, um, I'm sorry to say that, uh, is going to be Walter Goggins as the... Um, the main antagonist in the movie, Matthias. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And actually, I'm going to use his character to kind of transition into the negative. I'll get the positive first. Walter Goggins is a really good actor, and he did give a good performance, but going into my negative and then starting with that, um, his character is very one-note, and he is not written very well, and there's actually quite a bit of dialogue that really sucks, but... I feel like if it wasn't for Walter Goggins portraying him, a lot of it would have come across as cheesy and just stupid, but somehow he actually made it work. But again, the villain is very one-note, you don't care about him, and you just get annoyed every time he comes on. Once the second half of the movie got there, despite the fact that I enjoyed the first half, once they got to the island, everything changed drastically. Instead of focusing on Laura as a character and her struggle, um, to, you know, find her father, or at least find out what happened, and then also, um, everything else that you would think comes with that. They just, it felt like a lot of pandering to the video game, um, uh, fans, to the fans of this franchise, because there were scenes taken straight out of the video game, which were nice to look at, but I always feel like that's a level of pandering that I can't accept, because I look at these scenes and I think, oh, cool, it's either... How do I describe it? 
I either look at something and I think, oh, that makes me want to play the video game again, or I see something that makes me think of something that's not in the movie, and then I think, oh, I wish that they had added that because it was awesome in the video game, and it really tied everything together. I got a lot of that with this movie. I felt a lot of pandering, and I felt like a lot of stuff that were that was crucial in the video game to the storyline wasn't even mentioned or even hinted at. It was like non-existent. As far as my recommendation whether you should see this movie or not, um, if you're really into the video game and you really want to try it, I say yes. Me personally, I, out of a yes or no answer, I recommend just playing the video game again or just playing it for the first time if you haven't seen it. It's really great and it d this movie does not live up to the video game. It is one of the best video game movies ever, I will actually say that, but that's not really saying much. Now, as I did promise earlier, I am also going to talk about something in the movie that's that goes into spoiler territory that actually bothered me. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, and you do want to, go ahead, shut off the video right here, and just go out to watch the movie, enjoy your time. But for those of you who have seen it, or just don't care to see it, then this is the section for you and everybody else you've been warned. I'll give you one second to turn off the video. So let's take a couple of things from the video game that I loved. First of all, the way that they did her, um, her motivation to go to the island, I thought was really stupid, especially because it was done so well in the video game where it was just... Her father was interested in the island, and that was just, um, that was just a footnote. And really, she wanted to be an archaeologist, and this was the first time that she was trying to do it. In the movie, they just make it to where she just wants to find dear old daddy and find out what happens to her. They didn't even mention the fact that she's interested in archaeology or that she wants to do anything of the sort, like explore or anything. And I don't know, it just really bothered me. It didn't feel right. It didn't feel like it flowed naturally without that, um, without that part that was in the opening of the video game. There's even those bits in the video game where it just focuses on her trying to survive, you know, crafting weapons and tools to fight against her enemies, as well as, um, you know, that part where she has to survive in the wilderness fighting against wolves and picking off deer in order to get food. They do not mention any of that at all. It's just breezing through. And then the biggest part that really pissed me off was in the video game, I really enjoyed the fact that there was that supernatural edge, that they hinted that uh, Richard, I think, wait, was his name Richard? Anyway, Richard Croft, they hinted that he believed in the occult and supernatural and that Laura didn't, but then it showed, you know, ep that supernatural stuff was possible. And it made Laura think, you know, maybe my father was right about everything else. So then it, sh it shoots her into her journey to actually figure out everything. And with the video game, you would see, uh, you know, it started out re very re realistic and gritty. And then they would add little tiny bits of supernatural, like, you know, a plane getting uh, struck by lightning while it's a clear day. You know, um, thundercloud just forming out of nowhere and just striking it and then going away and then going all the way to the end where she's basically fighting uh, an undead queen they take that out in the they take that out in this storyline they made it too realistic they made it to where it was hey she's not actually some undead bitch she's just her sorry I'm trying to figure out a way to say this without running out of breath they took away a lot of the charm that I felt from the Tomb Raider games where they have occult and supernatural elements by, ma by making it to where they say, oh no, she's not undead, she just was a carrier of a plague while she was alive and they sealed her on the island so that nobody else would get infected. And I, while I liked that they did a risk there, I didn't like it. It didn't work for me. It just felt wrong. It didn't feel like my Tomb Raider. But anyway, that's just me complaining about this in some weird way. I, I, I know that it's a little j um, jumbled the way I'm doing it, but again, I'm a little bit out of practice, so just give me a couple more videos and then I think I'll be good. But hey, my opinion is not the only one that matters. I want to know what you guys 
think of this new Tomb Raider? Did you like it? Hate it? Or you haven't seen it yet? You know, what are you expecting from this movie if you haven't seen it yet? Or what did you expect from this movie if you have seen it? Either way, I want to know. And that's where I'm going to end this video. I'm really happy to be back doing this. I know, again, I'm still a little, um, confused as to how to go about this because I am out of practice. But again, I will, I will get more used to it as each video goes. So, thank you again for watching and farewell until the next video.